Hey guys, Alyssa Dawson here for City Lights on Novus TV. A sweetheart film at TIFF and VIF 2014, Fragoland is hilarious, relatable, and it just so happens to star Vancouver-based actor Lisa Derue, and we scored a one-on-one -on -one chat with her. Born in Winnipeg, now based in Vancouver, Lisa Derue is hitting her stride. Coming off a Gemini nomination for her role in Less Than Kind, she's now working opposite Sonia Bennett, James Caan, and Danny Trejo in the Vancouver shot film, Pregoland. Oh, you're such a loser. I'm not a loser, okay? I'm- Take a look at this. What? What are you, Ruth? I'm pregnant. What? I'm pregnant. What are you talking about? What does that about? mean? What does that mean? Pregoland is the story of a 35-year-old woman who is played by Sonia, and she, her name is Ruth, she still lives in her dad's basement. She still works at the grocery store that she started at when she was 15, and all of her friends that she grew up with are now married with kids, and she's completely the fish out of water in that group, and eventually they decide that they're going to break up with her because she's not part of their club anymore. And so, oh my gosh, I feel bad for I know, I know, I know. And then in this one moment where she's having a typical spat with her sister, her knee-jerk reaction is to spit out that she's pregnant. And her sisters just can't believe what she heard. And, and then it just spins from there and everything that goes with trying to keep up, you know, any kind of lie that just gets worse and snowballs and snowballs. And, and then of course, repercussions of all of that. So, yeah. I know your little secret. <gasps> Please don't tell anyone. I need to stay pregnant for a little while longer, also I'm afraid that my dad is going to die of a broken heart. Oh. Dad! <gasps> Doctor says keep the stress to a minimum. You promised me a sponge bath. Mm. Dad, that's it's disgusting. <laughs> I booked you for a 3D ultrasound. What? Hello, I don't have a Mexican cousin. Dr. Pedro will be doing the ultrasound. Okay, turn the back, turn the back, can't see this. <laughs> oh, two cute girls. What was it like for you stepping into the character Hillary's shoes in Pride Land? Ah, uh, oh man. Hillary was fun, cause she, Oh, I have, uh, I have a sister myself, and we had a very complicated history relationship. Um, so I took some of the aspects of my sister, which is that she's very organized and she's very passionate. And uh, also I have an aunt who's very, very much like that. So it was cool just to play, play someone who's so, so organized and so fierce and, and know exactly, you know, to know exactly what she wants. So yeah, it was, it was trippy. It was cool. Yeah, and this is one of the biggest movies you've done to date, right? Yeah, oh God, yeah. Yeah, and the cast is loaded. I mean, this yeah. is an all-star cast. Yeah. Uh, tell me about Jane, everyone you got to uh, work with. Oh, God. James Caan, amazing. I mean, Sonny Corleone, how can you beat that? In my brain, it kind of went back to, I remember my very first boyfriend one weekend making me sit down and watch all the Godfathers. And at the time, you know, why are we watching this? I don't really care. And then I look back now, and those movies are epic. And to know who he is, He's he's Marlon Brando's buddy, or was Marlon Brando's buddy, and is you know he calls him Bobby Duval, and you know are you kidding me? So that it, it took a minute, but the minute he got in the van, the very first day of shooting, typical James Gunn, he turns around, and he's like, oh, I got good looking daughters, and we went, okay, cool. He's so that's guy. how this is gonna roll. Yeah, All exactly, right. exactly. He's he's a seventy year old man that used to live at the Playboy Mansion and was very, you know well versed in the lady scene, so. The stories yeah. you guys must have oh, heard. My yes. mind is just going. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Trejo, who is known to everybody as the machete movie guy. Best part was, he goes to me, what are you, what are you doing this weekend? This was a different day. He goes, what are you doing this weekend? I said, uh, I don't know, why? He goes, you wanna go to a movie? I went, uh, I didn't know how to take that because it's Danny Trejo. And I was like, um, well, which movie would we go to? He goes, the Muppets. He was just trying to promote his Muppets movie. <laughs> oh my god, I love that. The fact that Danny Trejo was in yeah, the Muppets, I mean, yeah. that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was so cool. And he was just him being him, his goofy self and trying to promote it, which was awesome. Now, when you guys were sitting through reading this script, did you see this kind of success coming from this movie? I knew it was something special in the sense that knowing Sonya and knowing how much time and energy she put into it and and also having Jacob on board, Jacob Tierney, he was the director and he was the director of Good Neighbors and the Trotsky and both of them were at TIFF and he's a very well loved director, Canadian director and a really, really good actor. And so to know that he was on board because he's really particular about what he does. And so I knew that part of it was really cool. And then as soon as they said we got to go to TIFF, I went, okay, this is gonna be cool. Because it's tough to get a film, especially a West Coast film, into the Toronto Film Festival. 
So yeah, I knew, I knew it would be good. I didn't have a, I didn't really have an idea of how, how much variety there would be in it. Cause it, when I first read it, initially I read it very much just for the comedy of it. And then all of a sudden you start seeing what everyone brings to it and these different relationships and you go, holy Hannah, this isn't just a comedy. There's a lot of heart in terms of relationships and, and how deep this does go. We don't think it's fair to bore you with all our lame mommy talk anymore. We could talk about it. No, um, we just think you'd be happier if you found friends that you have more in common with. What? <laughs> you guys are my gang. You four. Look, I'm sorry about the baby shower. I had a brain fart. Ruth, you just don't fit in anymore. Amazing. So now, obviously, your life is full of musicals and acting and everything like yeah. that. But it was a long road uh, getting to where you are now, and yeah. it wasn't exactly acting based at the start, right? No, not at all. I was I was not in the arts at all as a kid. I uh, in about tenth grade, we had the option of for a, I was in a French immersion school, so French class could be core communications or theater, and I just liked the theater teacher. He was just a teacher at our school, and uh, took that. It was one class a week, but it wasn't a standard theater class. You know, you learned about different playwrights and stuff, but that was it. And uh, it, so that was my only real experience with the arts growing up. And it wasn't until I was in university and I thought it would take, you know, be an easy class to take was a theater class. And we had to go see Chorus Line and I just fell in love. I was supposed to go away for school for hockey and went, I'm not going to do that. And I signed up for dance classes and um, singing lessons and all. my family kind of went, what? I'm pretty sure my dad cried, but he got over it the first time I got paid to work on a film set. <laughs> and you saw the check coming? Yeah, yeah he's like, oh, that's my girl. Now, obviously, you've had so much success, um, and congratulations oh, on that. You. It's not easy in this industry. <laughs> Definitely uh, not. But for any new actors, do you maybe have some words of encouragement, something to kind of keep them going on those days yeah. when they're not booking? Oh, for sure. Um, I would say, number one, just know that it's a business and it's really not personal as much as people try to pretend like they don't care. I always say to people, it's super silly, but I say to people, it's like if we were going, say, even to Tim Hortons, before we even get there, you know what you're going to get. The odd time you might try something different, you might go for something you haven't tried before, but it's the same with somebody casting. Like, they have an idea, and, and the odd time they're waiting for someone to just come in and wow them, mm -hmm. but if they want someone who's six foot tall and Chinese, that's not me. That's, you know, whatever whatever they're looking for, you might be amazing, but you might not be the right piece of the puzzle, or you might not be the right donut. You don't know. So you just have to go be yourself, and, and don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about if you're gonna book or this or that, because I think when you get wrapped up in that, you're really not being authentically yourself and you're not being a good artist, you're being, you know, a little bit needy and then you get stuck in that rut of, I'm only, you know, I only have value if I'm booking. Whereas if you're a good artist and you, that's what you want to do, you're an artist all the time. It doesn't matter if someone's paying you to do it or not. So, and just know that it's a business. And again, you just know where you fit in terms of what your brand is, how to market yourself and, and be okay with that. All right, you guys, Prego Land is in theaters now, so grab some popcorn, grab your girlfriends, grab your guy friends, go see it. Sonia Bennett's writing is absolutely amazing, and my new friend, Lisa DeRue, is absolutely phenomenal in it. For City Lights on Novus TV, I'm Melissa Dawson.